Good evening. This is News.ph, but it's not politics as usual. I'm Pia Ontiveros. Yesterday, the Supreme Court declared the reproductive health law, save for a few provisions, constitutional. So tonight, we talk to both sides, the anti and the pro-RH. What's next? Our guest tonight in this first segment, Dr. Rinaldo Echavez, ad hoc chairman of Doctors for Life, and Anthony James Perez, president of Filipinos for Life. We should also have on the show Attorney Howard Calles, one of the petitioners against the RH law, but I understand he's still on the way. So if he gets here in 10 minutes, he can join us. If sure. not, he can join us. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's begin, Doctor, with uh, this well, very basic question. Where were you when you first heard the news yesterday, and what was the first thought that crossed your mind? Oh, well, I was in the house watching TV. I was waiting really for the mm. result, no? okay. the decision of the Supreme Court. And when I heard uh, Attorney Theodore T, T that it was not unconstitutional instead of being constitutional, I said, OK, that's OK. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the purple group were jubilant about it. and said, let's listen first what's in there. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to the uh, uh, provisions of the unconstitutionality and, it, and which one was part of it, I was so glad about it because mm -hmm. you know, that was really for the Filipinos for life and doctors for life. That was our main issues mm -hmm. that uh, we brought up in our petition. Okay, you section 7 and 23 na yes. sinabilang unconstitutional. And the, especially the, also 17. Mm, 17, sorry. Yeah, yeah the okay. 17 and then of course the 24, no, which is uh, penalties of the doctors. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Anthony, what about you? Where were you yesterday? When I you was in Baguio. Ah, okay, yeah, right outside was, the Supreme Court. I was also. there, I was uh, filming it with my own uh, cell phone, with my Android phone. Mm -hmm. um, I was there. Sinabi mo talaga Android. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Uh, mm -hmm. I was outside. I wasn't able to get in. But, you mm -hmm. know, I, I could barely hear what uh, he was trying to say. But uh, I was outside. I was trying to listen. And uh, when it was announced, uh, my, my uh, whole f uh, sentiments about it was that I was uh, hoping for the best, but uh, really expecting the worst. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, so is this is this the worst already? You think? I'm I'm, I'm really pensive about it uh, uh -huh. for now. But um, we are thankful for little victories, you mm -hmm. know, uh, okay. for the provisions that were uh, decided as unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. uh, that much I am thankful for. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, as, as far as uh, little victories are concerned, there are also opportunities for us to move forward mm -hmm. uh, with our advocacy as pro-lifers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When you say that you're, you're thankful for the little victories, um, is that the answer to this question? Or is there any confusion about which side can claim victory? Because yesterday, both, both sides were claiming victory. No? Mm -hmm. You're claiming victory in the sense that these provi certain provisions were declared unconstitutional. The yeah. other side is claiming victory also. Yes. Uh, as I've said, uh, we, we can be thankful for this. Uh, of course, a, a part of me is still, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I cannot claim total victory. Mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, apart from the fact that I really wanted most of the provisions to be declared unconstitutional, but that was for the justices to say and not for us. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, we will have to work on what we, what we uh, are having now and what, we, what has been given to us by the, the Supreme Court as uh, constitutional and unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And uh, we proceed from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you go through the list of what they declared as uh, unconstitutional, Doctor, like you were saying, can you expound uh, and, and explain more? No? Why do you say that uh, uh, you're happy, you're glad that these were the okay. sections that were declared unconstitutional? Well, actually, there were eight mm -hmm. items so that were uh, proven unconstitutional no, by the Supreme Court. In fact, the, the, the number one that I wanted was uh, the one with abortion. Mm -hmm. no? Which, only which one, section, doctor, is that? I think that is 23... Uh, I don't know, I'm not very sure. Okay. No, no, I think 17, 
-hmm. I cannot pinpoint on the, mm -hmm. but anyway, it's about abortive fashion. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy because it only one justice made it unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. I mean, made it constitutional, constitutional. which is Leonin. Mm -hmm. Sereno, Bernabe, and Rias, who were always on the other side, were already mm -hmm. with the Carpio and Reyes, no? Mm -hmm. And in fact, even, even Justice Carpio, I was, uh, I was surprised, no? Mm -hmm. Of his uh, uh, decision, no? that going to the left, no? to the uh, group, no? Of uh, being unconstitutional of those uh, uh, provision, mm -hmm. but I think I have to mention first here, uh, yes. uh, Mission to Beros, that I don't know the Supreme Court uh, really. I, I'm sure did not really go into all the the provision of the law, especially the IRR. In the IRR, there is what we call vaccination, mm -hmm. which is not in the law, mm -hmm. and that is what I'm afraid mm -hmm. because vaccination I'm, na pang. Uh, Fertility, anti-fertility uh -huh. vaccine. Okay. okay. It's not in the law, mm -hmm. but it's in the IRR. Implementing rules and regulations. Okay. So I don't know why they did not see it, mm -hmm. but I'm very sure of that because I was the one who fought against the tetanus toxoid vaccine mm -hmm. in 1995 mm -hmm. during the time of Flavier. Okay. Okay. Um, are you saying, doctor, that you would uh, consider? Your groups would consider filing a motion for reconsideration that you will, because Anthony Awadako was saying, you know, moving forward. No? Yeah. So, may MR, there will be an MR. Yeah. Our lawyers just thinking about it because uh, maybe not, no? because, you know, Supreme Court, that's Supreme Court. We have to respect that. No? Mm -hmm. If you file a motion for reconsideration, that means you don't agree with their decision. Yes. But I, 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 I told him, I said, no, we have to agree because we have to respect. Uh, the the uh, Supreme Court, that is the mm -hmm. highest court. Mm -hmm. Although what I saw with the decision was they were afraid of the legislative. Mm -hmm. That's why they did not consider it unconstitutional, the whole law. Mm -hmm. Because, you know... It, They're it's, afraid of the legislative, afraid uh, of Congress? Yeah, they're afraid. Like what? What do you mean? Uh, they might be... Uh, what? Impeached? Impeached. <laughs> ah, and they the, cannot be... Okay. They cannot impeach the, the congressman and mm -hmm. lawmakers, eh? Mm -hmm. Only the justices can be impeached. But anyway, that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. That's only my feeling. But the point is, all laws are considered constitutional. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's why they, they made it constitutional. Yeah. Kaya siya dumaan ng Congress, so we presume yes. there's a pre presumption of regularity. Yes, but the thing is, there, there are many things that you know, Congress uh, did not see mm -hmm. that is good for the people. In fact, they said, this is the uh, victory of women and youth. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Women will have a difficult situation here because there will be more sicknesses of the, you know, you understand? More sicknesses of Side effects. Side effects. All the side effects. Side effects of uh, the contraceptives. Contraceptives. Uh -huh. And it's good that uh, it was mentioned that uh, hopefully that will be removed. Mm -hmm. The hormonal, the IUD, uh -huh. and the implants, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, okay. Uh, all with side effects, with... Uh, yeah. But doctor, what you're saying is that you don't believe that you should file uh, an MR? As far as I'm concerned, but well, we have yeah. to discuss it with our group. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. let's ask yeah. Anthony for Filipinos uh, for Life. May MR ba? We would need to discuss that with Attorney Howie. Uh, and unfortunately, he's not, not yet here. Yeah. I hope he comes now. But uh, in, in the next few days, we will discuss this with, uh, with our lawyers, mm -hmm. especially our... Uh, for Filipinos for Life and uh, for Doctors for Life, uh, we got Attorney Howard Kalia. Uh, we will uh, discuss this uh, with him. I, I'm not prepared to make you know any judgment or any uh, definitive statement on uh, what happened yesterday mm -hmm. because I'm not a lawyer first of all, and second, I would like to you know to hear it from our uh, legal uh, counsel first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on uh, how to proceed from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um a while ago, uh, Dr. Chavez mentioned something. He said that you know the Supreme Court is afraid of the legislative. Na ba baka nga ma impeach mga ganon. D did that come up in uh, your discussions, in your consideration? Well, uh, I think there was certainly pressure from mm -hmm. the legislative. That's uh, I think that would uh, be the consensus of mm -hmm. uh, many of the pro-lifers. Mm -hmm. uh, there was indeed some pressure from the legislative to to indeed pass the RH uh, law. 
Uh, but uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, we pro-lifers, we who oppose the the and uh, the republic, uh, the reproductive health law, mm -hmm. we're supposed to do our job, uh, regardless whether this, uh, you know, there's pressure from the legislative or not, or from other sectors or not, mm -hmm. from foreign lobbyists also, if I may add. Mm -hmm. no, uh, foreign lobbyists yes. for, for uh, that, uh, representing what representing uh, the reproductive uh, pro RH side. Uh, mm -hmm. We are. What we are aware that there is a pressure and funding from foreign lobbyists too, mm -hmm. and this uh, unfortunately makes uh, our uh, job more difficult as pro-lifers who promote the the sanctity and the beauty of life. But uh, we've been uh, we've been decided on this for you know for quite some time now. The group, whether our age passes or not, we are mm -hmm. going to do our job regardless. Mm -hmm. no, but uh, the provisions that were stricken down or were struck down. Uh, that made our job a, a little bit easier, especially with the prohibitions, mm -hmm. many of the prohibitions taken down. Okay. Now that the status quo anti-order is uh, going to be or is about to be lifted, will, will you take any kind of action? For example, no, will, like, will you block the distribution of contraceptives? Are you going to do something proactive? No? Meron, do you have any plans, doctor? Pinag-usapan nyo ba yun? Uh, well, kasi very imaginative ang mga pro-RH. Um, Baka kasi okay, <laughs> kayo no, rin, di ba? But, no, but what maybe we will be doing, will be, we will see how they will implement it. Mm -hmm. Including the funding. Because I think that's the most important for them, the funding. Mm -hmm. Without funding, this law will not go on. Mm -hmm. But I think the, uh, the government is already instituting family planning. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no need of this law really. Uh, okay. But the thing is, you know, they want to make it more, but I'm afraid that abortion might be legal in this country. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as... Uh, Why do you say that? Because? You, know, you have the conference just last January, mm -hmm. if you will remember. Mm -hmm. A big conference in PSCC, PSCC. discussing abortion of, and teaching mm -hmm. the children how to abort. Mm -hmm. all, all their, all their uh, brochures, you know. And uh, I, I am very uh, sad to see that, and, uh, and hopefully, really, our youth will open their eyes that this is not uh, what uh, we are here you know, in, in this country you know, to be mm -hmm. to develop this country I mean it's not uh, abortion or contraceptives you know. mm -hmm. so the doctor you doctors for life will not do anything um, uh, creative or imaginative uh, to block the implementation of the RH law no no if no no because if we block the uh, the, the uh, are its law now. We are against the, the decision of the Supreme Court. As, uh, mm -hmm. as I said, we have to respect the Supreme Court. No? Mm -hmm. This decision, okay, go ahead. But be sure that the implementation is right, especially on, on the right to life of, uh, of uh, the, new, the unborn. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have to protect our doctors no? being penalized. No? Because in the, the uh, provision that were made unconstitutional, uh, there was uh, really very clear that uh, doctors may not mm -hmm. inform, may not do information or uh, promote uh, this law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anthony, is, uh, is your group, the Filipinos for Life, going to do anything? Uh, would you yeah. take any kind of action? Uh, apart from the MR. Of course. And uh, apart from Twitter <laughs> and social media. But you don't have to say Twitter mula kahapon. I, uh, it's actually our members. Uh, I, personally, I am not very good at Twitter. I, I, okay. I prefer Facebook, you know, uh -huh. uh, posting uh, information uh, from my ah, Facebook. Okay. Oh. It is actually the members of the Filipinos for Life who are active in Twitter. Ah, okay. And uh, shout out to them, no? Uh, because I, I checked your Twitter, no? And then a uh, few days back, you know, uh, yeah. you ka kina. So mga uh, that, pro -R yeah, um, but uh, we we become busy uh, for the preparations for Baguio, kasi. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time I went online was you know a few days ago. Okay. Uh, but uh, last uh, February, February 14 to be mm -hmm. exact, uh, we went around uh, the university belt, uh, knowing that there is this culture of giving away condoms on that day, mm -hmm. because. Uh, People uh, had had have this thought that you know people are going to the motels to express their love for you know uh, and express their love through you know the sexual act. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And so we, what we did as Filipinos for Life uh, in uh, cooperation with Pro-Life Philippines was to uh, give away candies. Mm -hmm. These pa re we repacked candies. Uh, they had uh, messages of... Uh, uh, chastity and uh, urging the young people, especially, to keep, chast to keep their chastity and uh, virtue alive and burning. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the thing that we want to do uh, at this point, as Filipinos for Life, the, the members, you know, and the officers, uh, we want. Uh, chastity and modesty to become fashionable again. Mm -hmm. This is really the uh, the best way we can, uh, you know, influence the youth right now, so that we, you know, even if they are into this culture of, uh, they are faced with the culture of contraceptives, of sex education, they will know what is right from wrong, and at least they will know from, you know, they will have this uh, uh, foundation where you know they have chastity mm -hmm. and modesty yep. in, in their minds are you saying if they if they will have sex education uh, and access to contraceptives that they will not <coughs> be chased and that they well, will not uh, be well here's modest? the thing uh, about sex education we really believe that this is the parents primary job mm -hmm. you know and the primary job of the parents is to teach the values uh, when it comes to sex education, it, uh, I, I'd rather have the parents uh, mm. teach it first, okay. you know, because uh, yeah. not only because this is the primary job of the parents, and, uh, we want our children to get the moral values from our parents themselves. Now, um, the sex education that will be implemented uh, by, uh, through the RH law, I'm not sure about it. I heard that there will be a uh, uh, conferences or forums where parents will be uh, part of you know the making the curriculum but uh, we have to see you know? but mm -hmm. as for Filipinos for life we will always try to promote and we have always been promoting chastity mm -hmm. but can you, can you ask the question uh, if uh, they do have access to contraceptives and if they do have that sex education those sex education uh, classes in the curric in the school curriculum Will that mean that they will not be chaste and that they will not be modest? Because you're saying well, yeah. we want the, the values of chastity and modesty, mm -hmm. and, and no, no one's quarreling with yeah. that, okay? Pero, pero it sounds that way. Eh? Mm -hmm. Well, know? here's the thing uh, it will now depend on the module that will be given. Mm -hmm. I really sincerely hope that the module that they will be giving to our, uh, to our uh, children, as far as sex education is concerned, first, uh, Sana, the parents will have, you know, the first dibs. Mm -hmm. uh, you, the, the module is created in such a way that the parents will be the primary teachers. Mm -hmm. Secondary na lang yung mga teachers sa ano. And then uh, we reinforce, we strengthen, we form these parents so that these parents are able to transmit mm -hmm. the, the right information and the right values mm -hmm. uh, for sex education. Yeah. Um, this is a kind of module that will really be helpful uh, to our children and not just, you know, simply give them instructions on how to have sex, how to have quote-unquote safe, safe and satisfying sex. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this is the thing that we are after. You know, values first, uh, sex education uh, is a you know, secondary thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but can you, uh, let's go back to my question. Yeah. I was saying that, you know, are you going to do anything? Would you take any kind of action? Yes, uh, let me go back to the, yeah. you know, the, the thing that we did uh, last February 14. Oh, that oh. was something very simple. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, but bakit candy nga pala? Uh, you know, Valentine's Day, sweet. <laughs> no? okay. uh, but uh, we, we, you know, uh, it, it was sort of a tradition mm -hmm. uh, started uh, by the late uh, Father Vic oh, 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 from uh, the Dominicans okay. uh, who served as the advisor of uh, pro-life Philippines. Okay. Uh, okay. Of course, later on, we will uh, we will give more than candies, but for now, we don't, really do not have any funding. So, candy na muna. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. So, pero hindi kayo, kasi ang iniisip ko, ano, yeah. ano kayang gagawin ng mga pro-life? Are they going to block the distribution? Yeah. Pupunta ba kayo ng mga barangay health center? Pupunta ba kayo ng um, uh, municipal health center? Yes. Harangin nyo ba yung pagbigay ng... Ganun ba, no? It's, it's still too if, early. If, we, yeah. if we're going to be very graphic about... It's still too early to tell. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to believe is that uh, pro-lifers now will not fight the last war, quote, uh, you know, so to speak. The last war? Yeah, you know, you know the expression, uh, we are, we've always been, uh, you know, fighting the last war. Na, lagi, tayo, lagi kaming huli. Mm -hmm. no? uh, 
we've always been in the defensive. Mm -hmm. Now we want to be really more proactive. This is what we will be doing in the next few days and weeks. Uh, we will be planning out, mapping out our strategies with the uh, current form of the uh, RH law that was given by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Okay, and at this point, you cannot say if no, there will be an too early. It's just too early. Yeah. Sayang, wala si Howie eh. Yeah. Seven, ano na ba? 7.20? No, <laughs> sorry. Howie, if you're watching, where are you? Okay. Um, uh, what... What do you want to hear at Sunday Mass, uh, Dr. Ed Chavez? I'm presuming you are Catholic and that you go yeah, to yeah. Sunday Mass. I, because, you know, people are, one of the first thoughts that crossed many people's minds yesterday, what are the bishops, what are the priests going to say on Sunday Mass? No, I think uh, they will continue with, with their advocacy of, you know, uh, sacred days of life. You know? mm -hmm. And I, I don't think they will touch on this anymore. Oh, hindi na? Uh, yeah, because the, the chief, uh, the uh, President of CBCP, uh, Archbishop Sok uh, mm -hmm. Villegas, said that you know we have to move on, like uh, uh, in the movies, you know, like in the <laughs> move on, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and go back to uh, our advocacy on okay. you know, going to the poor. You know. Okay, but my question, doctor, is no. what do you want to hear? No, you, no, you don't want to hear anything anymore. No more. We're gonna have to it's, it's and enough. And you know. Let's just wait, uh, simmer down, and. Uh, Let's wait what will happen, how the government will implement this law mm -hmm. now that it is being, uh, we call it, ligated. You know. <laughs> ligated, okay. <laughs> Are you hoping na magkabuliliyaso sa implementation or, Let, know? Let's see, let's see. You know. let's, see. Let, let's hope that, you know, everything will be all right, especially on the funding, because we will be watching on the funding, really, you know, where they are going to put. Mm -hmm. Is it on the services? Is it on the clinics? Is it to protect the, the mothers or the infants. Mm -hmm. And this is what okay. we are going to do. Where do you want to see the funding go? Where exactly do you want to see the funding go? Of course, to the services. The no? services. Yeah, especially okay. prenatal, postnatal. Mm -hmm. All these things must be very clear to us how mm -hmm. this will be uh, implemented. Because mm -hmm. this is very important. This is the only reason that we have maybe high mortality rate. Because mm -hmm. we have no services, especially in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. So we are telling our doctors now, now that there is no pro bono now, no? because it's unconstitutional. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody will be paid if you uh, uh, make your service to your patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will be penalized if you don't want to give contraceptives to a patient who will be asking mm -hmm. from our doctors. Mm -hmm. That's good enough for us. Mm -hmm. Because before, in the old, I mean, the old uh, provision, we are forced, and we are forced to inform Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's coercion to us mm -hmm. uh, in the old uh, way. Now that it's removed, at least uh, we are happy about it mm -hmm. for the doctors. For the doctors, you you won't have to inform your patients anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they want, they can go to some other doctors. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Because lab labag sa kalooban yun, di ba? Ayon yun naman pinipilit na 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 pipilit ang kayo. Oh uh, yeah, hindi oh. naman pinipilit na ngayon. Oh. According to the oh. law, yes. we are not forced to do it right. anymore. Right, okay. Yeah. Anthony, uh, the question is, what do you want to hear at Sunday Mass? I, I want our uh, pastors, to, our, our bishops and our priests to you know, keep saying the message of life. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been hearing rumors, I don't know, fueled by the media, or, I, I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm fresh from Baguio now. Uh, we've been hearing rumors that uh, the church has gone soft mm -hmm. on, you know, on the issue of RH. I would I would like to think that this is I'm not sure I haven't read it no but I would like to think this is not the case uh, but whether this is the case or not the lay you know the 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 lay uh, block of the church you know the church is comprised of the clergy and the laity uh, the laity have you know will always be active on this mm -hmm. uh, since uh, I, I think this is a new phase in the fight for against RH. I mean, uh, since RH is already there, I've been telling people this. Uh, this is a new phase where uh, we as laity should take the lead mm -hmm. and not anymore rely on our bishops. I'm not saying that the bishops are not necessary anymore. But, but uh, you said they've gone soft, <laughs> no, according that's to the, the rumors. rumors. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. I would like to believe that this is a new phase on, our, on the pro-life movement mm -hmm. in the Philippines, mm -hmm. where the lay will lead the way and the clergy will help us. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. not, uh, it's not like those times, uh, and, and I'm saying it's a, it's a bad time, it's a bad tactic. 
uh, where you would remember uh, the late Cardinal Sin mm. would always call for for rallies, etc., etc. Yeah. But now I think um, this is a new time for us for the lay to take mm -hmm. lead. So it's not like you're going to be waiting for uh, something to be said from the pulpit. Exactly. You will we just will conduct guerrilla warfare. Uh, not, <laughs> not, not necessarily, <laughs> no, but um, but uh, that would be that would be a good start. No? But uh, mm -hmm. the, the the point here is that we need to professionalize and to expand and to you know uh, improve our uh, the, the pro life movement as a whole mm -hmm. uh, if it's necessary that uh, the pro life leaders you know uh, from the lay would take the lead then that's uh, that's the way to do it i think in mm -hmm. my opinion the year of the lady yes the year, the year of the lady, of the lady. yeah mm -hmm. wait so a while ago you said you want to hear uh, you still want to hear the pro life message from priests from and priests, uh, the bishops yes. no um, so do you want to hear them on Sunday? When you go to Mass on Sunday, do you want to hear them lambast the RH law or uh, uh, not the RH necessarily RH lambast. Not, 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 not lambast. necessarily. What? I, I won't what put, put it that way. I would like, yeah. I, I, you know. No, I would, I would like them to preach the gospel in season and out of season. And that means to proclaim the gospel of life too. Mm -hmm. If they need to say that uh, some politicians have gone wrong, have done wrong, then it, uh, if that's necessary, that so be it. Mm -hmm. But I would not like, uh, I would really like them to still uh, push the message of life in their mm -hmm. homilies, in their talks. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, yeah, because they need to, you know, to be our inspiration too. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, yeah. the lady are working very hard and are sacrificing so much mm -hmm. in order uh, to advance the pro-life cause. Yeah, so we're not sure that we will hear anything from the CBCP if, as you said, you know, the rumors are true that the church is I think that's just an interpretation. Is. Interpretation. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's an interpretation. But uh, it's an interpretation that's, you know, bound to happen because mm -hmm. there are so many people, you know, they, they go online, they have yeah. their own opinions. Yeah, yeah. you <laughs> know, in the run-up to this and while uh, the deliberations were going on in Congress, you know, there was this Oratio Impera Imperata, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we won't have that anymore on Sunday. Uh, the Ora Oratio Imperata uh, yeah. is uh, the, this this Oratio Imperata on against the RH bill. But there's also an Oratio Imperata that's uh, for life, mm -hmm. you know, for respect for human life. Mm -hmm. I think that will continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Final words, uh, Anthony, and then Dr. Chavez. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a very challenging moment and uh, the very challenging. Uh, face mm -hmm. for Filipinos and you know especially Catholics but we will uh, continue our work towards you know respecting life family and marriage uh, we will uh, th there are setbacks of course but uh, the current victories afforded to us by the Supreme Court we will take advantage of them and we and rest assured that you know, we will always be uh, working for the promotion of you know of life family and marriage especially for the poor people mm -hmm. okay thank you anthony uh, thank you. dr chavez well yeah the doctors for life will continue uh, for the culture of life you know, against the culture of death mm -hmm. culture of death is divorce we will not agree with that e will be euthanasia we will mm -hmm. not agree with that mm -hmm. a is abortion we will not agree with that and t which is uh, total, total fertility. fertility control. Okay. Which I thought, I thought it was taxes. Yes. <laughs> no, no, which okay. is one half, 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 yeah. not, not uh, total now. Uh -huh. okay. And then we have the homosexual uh, agenda, same sex marriage. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we will be against that no? mm -hmm. all throughout. If Congress will have that, we will be uh, against it. Mm -hmm. okay. That is for the doctors of our life. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thank Chavez you. and Anthony. Barami Salama, thank you for being here. We're taking a short break. News.ph will be right back. Stay with us. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah, sandali lang po. Welcome back. You're still watching News.ph on the Solar News Channel. I'm Pia Ontiveros. In this second half of the show, we talk to RH Law Advocates. Our guests, Dr. Esperanza Cabral, former Health Secretary, Risa Ontiveros, former representative of the Akbayan Party List, and Emeline Versosa, Executive Director, Philippine Commission on Women. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very yeah. much. You're all beaming and so happy. <laughs> Parang ibang-ibang sa atmosphere kanina. 
You can tell who won the gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> Kayo ba yon? Parang, no? Parang ano? Uh, you know, I, I, I ended with a question sa kanilang dalawa kanina, kina Dr. Chavez and Anthony. Uh, what do you want to hear at Sunday Mass? I'll start with that question sa inyo, no? Are you prepared for what the priests will say at Sunday Mass? And I'm presuming you're all, of course, you're, you're Catholic, priest, mm. but I'm presuming yeah. you're all Catholic and that you still attend Sunday Mass. So, uh, Ma'am Versosa, uh, what, what do you, uh, are you prepared for what the priests may say at Sunday well, Mass? Well, I'm hoping they won't say anything. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Risa? Well, uh, the kids and I are lucky we found a parish church where even sa kainit-initan ng RH law struggle, mm -hmm. we didn't suffer anti-RH homilies or prayers of the faithful mm -hmm. or or videos after communion. So, sana... Where was that? What church uh, Church of that? the Jesu. No, yeah. no, no. Yung, yung oh, anti-RH. Some, some other churches. Oh, yes. Uh, which churches Many colleagues uh, mentioned that. Uh -huh. Well, uh, here in Metro Manila as well as in different mm -hmm. um, provincial cities especially. So, okay. sana this Sunday, if they will mention it, at best they will echo what I think was a good message from CBCP President Archbishop Villegas that what we have been saying from the beginning, there are so many other issues on which we can unite. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I read the, the story correctly, he said something to the effect like, uh, let's move on. So mm -hmm. I hope it reflects a beginning mm -hmm. acceptance on the part of the Catholic yeah. hierarchy that, as Sec SP said, we won the gold medal. Uh, okay, wait. Church of the Jesu at Ateneo de Manila, of course. Um, Secretary Cabral, uh, are you prepared for what the priests will say at Sunday Mass? Yes, I've been prepared for whatever they say for the past many years. <laughs> <laughs> for the past many years. Yes. So, uh, a few more years pa. <laughs> Probably not. I think they will take the lead from the people who have already spoken mm -hmm. and um, respect the decision of the Supreme Court and move on. And mm. perhaps, and this is uh, something that I wish for, we could work together on mm -hmm. things that are important, that we agree on, mm -hmm. even as we disagree on certain mm -hmm. things like the RH law. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can work together. What yes. do you mean by that? Yes. Like which, uh, which particular issues, which particular provisions, etc. Are you are you talking about? Maybe not in the RH law, <laughs> but oh, okay. uh, in other <laughs> in other problems that are facing our country, such as poverty, mm -hmm. such as uh, in social inequity and things like those. Mm -hmm. Even the ecology. But even, but yeah. even yes, in the RH law, um, it says you can promote natural family planning mm -hmm. and artificial contraceptives. So they can promote natural family planning. Mm -hmm. And then, and and then, then you guys will take care of the... Both. Both. Both, both yes. actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. Okay. Where were you? Well, Risa, you were in Baguio, ma'am. I was ma also there. You were also in Baguio. I was in the Senate. Uh, you were in the Senate. Senate Senator uh, Pia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cayetano was uh, going to have a hearing mm -hmm. on marital infidelity. Mm -hmm. And then she suspended the hearing for a while so that she could monitor the, uh -huh, the proceedings. Okay. So we so were all there happy no, no, to, Okay. Yeah. And what was the first <laughs> thought that crossed your mind when you heard the news? Well, ecstatic, <laughs> happy. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, but At then, India, then we weren't oh. sure yet. We, we didn't know because we didn't have access to, uh -huh, to, to the okay. news. But when that you time. heard that, okay, there were these eight provisions yeah. that were declared unconstitutional. Yeah. What, ano naman yung pumasok sa isip? Well, um, generally, kasi the core was mm -hmm. was the core intact. message was intact. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it was okay, okay that um, you limit only to the public, and then mm -hmm. it's, it's respect for religious beliefs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Risa, you were there in Baguio, like we said. Yes. Uh, what is the first thought? Uh, and you, you can keep it brief, na lang. Well, we, we've been hearing you talk since yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're forgiven. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, while we were waiting for uh, SC spokesman Teddy Te to speak, part of the feeling was, come on, sige na, sabihin mo na. Mm -hmm. and, but when we finally heard what we were hoping to hear, well, as, as Evelyn said, just joy. Unadulterated joy. Mm -hmm. okay. oh. And then, Sec SP, like you said, you feel like you won the gold medal. Right, yes. Uh, Olympic uh, it, gold, no? Yes. <laughs> it was a very emotional moment for the pro RH uh, group, the Purple Ribbon for RH, mm -hmm. because uh, we have been fighting to have this law upheld over mm -hmm. the last year yes. and three weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we were very relieved and very happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we go through very briefly, very quickly, these eight items mm -hmm. no, that were uh, declared unconstitutional? Uh, it's not the whole eight uh, sections, by the way. Just yes, one yes. Part. One, 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 uh, one 
what do you call that, one item or whatever, Section 7 and mm -hmm. 7 of Section 23. Right. Uh, kahapon, ang parang binobroadcast niyong message is that, oh, we can do without it anyway. So, okay lang. Is that correct? Is yes, that right, we can live without the provisions that the Supreme Court struck down. Section 7 refers to uh, the um, private health facilities, particularly those owned by religious groups. Mm -hmm. And um, the, cons the <coughs> Supreme Court said that we cannot force them mm -hmm. to provide reproductive health services if they do not want to. Mm -hmm. On the so other it's hand, respect mm -hmm. for others' yes, beliefs. right. Okay. So we can live with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Section 23 is really about penalties for health professionals. And being a health professional mm -hmm. myself, I'm happy that there will be no punishment. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I think that majority of health professionals also subscribe to the reproductive health law. Mm -hmm. And even without a law, they are going to. Mm -hmm. um, provide reproductive health services even if they're Catholic mm -hmm. or even if they're not. Mm -hmm. And I always rely on the oaths of service mm -hmm. that we take <coughs> as well as the code of ethics that we follow mm -hmm. to put the best interest of our patients mm -hmm. over everything else. Mm -hmm. e even religion. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, a while ago, Dr. Chavez was saying that um, he's glad no, na wala ng penalties because parang labag masyado sa kalooban yes. kung pipilitin pa siya kung ayaw niya. Correct. Okay. Yes. And you have right. no quarrel with that. I mean, you have no problem with that, no, Risa and Well, Andrew. the parts of the eight provisions that were struck down seem to have to do with, as like, mm -hmm. we were saying, religious affiliation or beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, parental consent, mm -hmm. yeah. consent of the mm -hmm. spouse, conscientious mm -hmm. objection, which, as she was saying, in current medical practice and in the law itself mm -hmm. are already recognized and protected. Mm -hmm. So we are celebrating that while we study what possible proper steps we may take, Para habulin pa yung mga yon. But we're very happy that the heart of the law is mm -hmm. alive and kicking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What have to do with the mandate of government mm -hmm. to distribute family planning supplies, mm -hmm. the national Philippine National Drug Formulary, which will include uh, what are the legal, safe, non-aborty fashion effective uh, family planning supplies um, mm -hmm. to be approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Um, very importantly, the age and development appropriate RH education, mm -hmm. um, the mandate for DOH to procure mm -hmm. and distribute mm -hmm. supplies through the local government units and the role of the LGUs, and uh, the uh, popular awareness mm -hmm. and nationwide multimedia campaign on RH. And, uh, uh, rep Ed Selagman, our principal author in the 14th Congress, is celebrating with us, reminding us that these, uh, which were upheld as constitutional, mm -hmm. are the strongest and they, they're, they're at the heart of the, of the program mm -hmm. now. Okay, so is there still going to be an MR? To we ask that you, they uphold, the Supreme Court upholds the, or, or, or deems constitutional those that they already said are unconstitutional. Hahabulin nyo pa ba yon? We don't have the final word on that yet yes. because the authors have not met. Mm -hmm. But in talking to them individually, I think that they say that sapat na ang RH law and mm -hmm. that they will not file for a motion for reconsideration to mm -hmm. reconsider the provisions that were declared unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are other remedies like mm -hmm. executive action on the implementing rules mm -hmm. and regulations mm -hmm. or future amendment mm -hmm. by Congress. So mm -hmm. it isn't just MR that uh, we could mm -hmm. do. So, okay. mm -hmm. so pwede idaan sa IRR? Pwede baguhin? Mm -hmm. uh, you, is there something that you can put in the IRR that will that was not originally in the law? Actually, no, like we for cannot example, do that. Like for example, Dr. Ajabe, <laughs> <laughs> vaccination halimbawa, nasa IRR, wala daw sa law, etc. Huh? Yeah, well, um, I think that uh, vaccination is a universally accepted mm -hmm. practice. <laughs> it is not something that uh, the uh, RH law or the Supreme Court has any quarrel about. Mm -hmm. That's why they did not strike it down. Mm -hmm. What they struck down was a word, yes. primarily abortive mm -hmm. fashion, mm -hmm. in, uh, primarily uh, the definition of abortive fashion. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 That's the only thing because it violated the RH law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. now that uh, there's going the, the, uh, the Supreme status quo anti order lifted, what are we going to see when it, when we talk about okay, we're going to implement the RH law? What exactly are people going to see, ma'am? Well, uh, our part the PCW is an oversight agency for mm -hmm. government agencies, so we'd like to work with DOH to make sure 
that the RH will really be implemented. Aside from RH, there's Magna Carta of Women. So, mm -hmm. talagang these are state obligations kasi. These are translations of international human rights treaties like CEDO. Mm -hmm. so, so, what we'd like to see is really full implementation up to the local government unit level. Mm -hmm. And full implementation means what? Uh, budgets. You have LGUs mm -hmm. and maybe budgets should be allocated. Yeah. Barangay health centers distributing Barang contraceptives. Yes. Yes. What to the but willing receptors? Offering yes. ligation, etc. Yes, yes. With, with the proper information mm -hmm. on all the side effects and what is good for the person, so it's not forcing them, on, but but really mm -hmm. providing uh, choices for for the women, mm -hmm. especially the indigent who may choose. Yes those methods but can't afford them don't have real access mm -hmm. okay what else will we see uh, from your from your camp in the next few days I think a lot of uh, the work is just starting mm -hmm. and uh, primarily we will be very willing to help the Department of Health which is the lead agency for the implementation yes. of the RH law mm -hmm. in implementation but mostly for monitoring mm -hmm. and making sure that they are actually implementing the law effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Let's talk about uh, what is going to happen next so apart from implementation, working with, with the Department of Health because they're the uh, implementing agency. Um, what else is going to, are we going to see uh, in the next, what, two, three years? You know, because uh, the anti-RH groups, of course, you know, they say so many things are going to happen. A while mm -hmm. ago, sabi nga ni Dr. Chavez, or oh, ang susunod on divorce, abortion, etc. <laughs> maraming, maraming, ano, maraming mga uh, scenarios mm -hmm. no, that, mm -hmm. that they are uh, talking about. Mm -hmm. He's probably right because now actually there have been divorce bills filed mm -hmm. in Congress already. Mm -hmm. Each of these will be tackled by Congress and will be decided upon mm -hmm. uh, in accordance with their best lights. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, as far as divorce is concerned, they're going to be discussing that in this Congress. Okay. Um, sure. I am sure that uh, the abortion issue is a non-issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is uh, in our Constitution. It says that we cannot perform abortions in the Philippines except mm -hmm. in very, very particular instances. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. um, and then, as far as homosexuality is concerned, because that's part of his death uh, yes, uh -oh. thing. Mm -hmm. Homosexual, mm -hmm. same-sex marriage. That is a conversation that is going on mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yes. And nearly everybody in the progressive world, mm -hmm. in the developed mm -hmm. world, agree that uh, no matter what your sexual orientation is, you are a human being mm -hmm. and yes. entitled to human rights. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But here in the Philippines, even the LGBT community are not yet talking about yeah. same-sex marriage mm. yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. They're saying they're working on an anti-discrimination mm -hmm. bill mm -hmm. and they want to pass it into mm -hmm. law and they're saying not yet same-sex marriage, maybe somewhere down the road we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Now it suffices to talk maybe about uh, what civil unions. Um, th there's a certain term that uh, uh, same-sex couples have the same rights and recognized rights mm -hmm. and responsibilities mm -hmm. as heterosexual mm -hmm. couples. As SEC SP said, there are at least two bills on divorce in Congress, but one is pro-divorce, one is actually anti-divorce. And so mm -hmm. that will be an interesting and I think necessary public discussion mm -hmm. centered around uh, our Congress. Now, in terms of divorce, yeah. we're not really pushing for it mm -hmm. as, as yet. What we want to do is really more for uh, more conversations among stakeholders before mm -hmm. pushing it in Congress because we heard the President say that he wasn't going to, mm -hmm. to sign anything like that. So it's not among our priority. Uh, but we do support the anti-discrimination bill yes. and mm -hmm. we've been uh, proposing uh, language in international documents to recognize sexual orientation and gender identity because mm -hmm. they're human beings, mm -hmm. LGBT community and mm -hmm. they, they have rights and they suffer from a lot of discrimination at yes. work, in public spaces, also violence against, uh, against them, in schools, bullying, so mm -hmm. these things have to stop. Mm -hmm. Of I course, one yeah. other thing that will happen just around our age is yeah. the education yes. of mm -hmm. our children, young people, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, through DEP Ed, mm -hmm. uh, working on the modules, mm -hmm. training their teachers, mm -hmm. getting yeah. the buy-in of mm -hmm. the parents mm -hmm. and PTAs. But, but what do you say to earlier? Anthony was saying that dapat ang parents daw may first dibs. You know, the parents should be the first teachers of uh, right. sex yeah. education, yeah. which is yeah. 
We uh, agree. Dapat lang, ano? Yes. Dapat. <laughs> the ideal. But, but, service, but the reality yeah. is, I don't, uh, my parents did teach me, and they mm -hmm. were doctors, professions. I learned my sex education in school, in my Catholic school. What mm -hmm. Catholic so school? St. Teresa's. St. Teresa's. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so I think it should work both ways. And, mm -hmm. and you see children, sometimes they don't talk to the parents, and mm -hmm. parents don't know how to rear their children. So what we're promoting really is for parents for example, in the Pantawid Pamilya, there are family development sessions where mothers and parents are taught all these things, how mm -hmm. to handle their children. That's, that's good, and I think that should continue. Mm -hmm. But not all families have, have that kind of relationship with mm -hmm. their teenagers and their parents. Mm -hmm. But surveys mm -hmm. show that most Filipino parents aren't willing or able to talk about sexuality and mm -hmm. sex and RH with mm -hmm. their kids. So rather than that, our children learn about these important matters from their peers who may mm -hmm. know as little or as wrongly about them, mm -hmm. or rather than they learn from no offense meant mass media, Media, mm. but without a no concerned offense. adult supervising, <laughs> uh -huh. mm. then let the teachers and the schools be the partners of the parents okay. and the home mm. in helping young people to learn about this very important fact of uh -huh. life. Okay. Um, er earlier also, uh, Anthony was saying that what they want is to promote, in you know, moving forward though, to promote chastity and modesty. Mm. You have no quarrel with that, right? I, oh, I agree oh. with that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as... Uh, Emeline was saying, the reality is many young people actually engage in sexual activity. So we might as well teach them sexual responsibility. Mm -hmm. okay. In fact, the range of um, those teachings about sexual responsibility are A, B, C, and the A is still abstinence. abstinence. Yeah, we yeah. tell young people, yeah. you know, focus yeah. on school, mm -hmm. preparing for work and family life, Save rather than marriage, on, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. rather than early mm -hmm. onset of sexual relations. Mm -hmm. But because as Sec SP said, the reality is something different. If you're already sexually active, you say B, be monogamous, mm -hmm. not multiple partners. And C, mm -hmm. use contraceptives, condoms. <laughs> including condoms. <laughs> so to avoid teenage pregnancy, yeah. teenage mm -hmm. abortion, teenage STDs. Which mm -hmm. is actually on the rise. I was yeah. reviewing the Young Adult Fertility Survey yes. recently, 2013. It doubled. The number mm -hmm. of teenage pregnancies doubled a dec from, from mm -hmm. a decade ago. The rate yeah. doubled. The rate yeah. doubled. Yeah. Yeah. You know, part of the discussion, the very very long uh, discussion that took forever uh, upon <laughs> on the RH law was that uh, some people were saying, I don't want my taxes to go to contraceptives for mm. poor people. Now that the RH law will be implemented, how do you address that issue? Well, taxes are a, an obligation of every citizen. And in fact, if we're to be fair, the poor pay a greater proportion mm -hmm. of the national mm -hmm. taxes than mm -hmm. we middle class or the rich uh, put together. Mm -hmm. And then those taxes benefit every citizen equally mm -hmm. in terms of the public services that mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. um, provides. So what is so wrong, and we think it's a very good thing that a public good like mm -hmm. reproductive health, health in general, and mm -hmm. RH as part mm -hmm. of that, uh, should also be funded by those government revenues. Mm -hmm. uh, when was the status quo anti order? Uh, one, uh, a year? Was it a year? Yeah, March 18, March, yeah. March 18. 2013. Okay. So one year and uh, a few, days. few weeks. A few <laughs> weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you feel that that was? Uh, wasted time or parang nasayang yung oras ninyo or, or no? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. In those uh, one year and a few weeks, more than 5,000 maternal mortalities had occurred. Mm -hmm. And if the RH law had been implemented last year, a significant number of those maternal deaths could have been prevented. I'm not saying all of them could have been prevented, but a significant number of them could have been prevented. In that one year, there were more than 1.5 million unintended pregnancies. And if we had the reproductive health law, some of those, a significant number of them, could also have been prevented. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the induced abortion that comes from unintended pregnancy could have been prevented, and deaths of mothers and children could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. well, where did the 1.5 million figure come from, ma'am? Um, those are estimates that we make from the number of pregnancies as well as the number of births that we observe. Mm -hmm. um, we actually observe more than 3.5 million pregnancies every year, but there are only something like 2.3 
million births. Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, somewhere mm -hmm. these pregnancies got lost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we going to see something dramatic in the next few years? When I say dramatic, I mean, for example, you know, one of the favorite stories of the media, both local and international, is the Fabella Hospital and how it yes. is a baby factory. And mm -hmm. you, you have four babies and four newborn babies and their mothers in one bed. No? Yes. And, I mean, it's like a long line in, in, mm -hmm. in the delivery. Sometimes they can't even deliver in the delivery room, etc. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see something dramatic in the sense that there will be less uh, of that in the next few years because of the RH law? Is that what, is that what we're going to see? We hope Most that there is that there is going to be something like that. But uh, if something like that happens, it is not going to be just because people are no longer getting pregnant, but because we are providing better services, there are more hospitals, mm -hmm. more birthing facilities, mm -hmm. so Fabella is not overcrowded as mm -hmm. it is now. Mm -hmm. so. okay. and that's also part of the RH law. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, RH law for us is definitely, you know, in our hearts, in our souls, uh, a gender law. It's also a health law. Mm -hmm. And so we, we see it as in that tradition of um, quality affordable medicines law, RH law, looking forward to setting up the universal healthcare system. So we're really hoping that uh, from birth till, till we die, that progressively uh, we can set up in our country a health system that is really responsive and empowering to mm -hmm. the citizens, to the patients. Okay, last five minutes of the show. Um, I'll give that all to you so that you can make your final uh, statement. So, uh, ma'am, versus also. Well, with the RH law, we hope that um, all this uh, battle between two sides get get uh, we, we get stopped already. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we hope that we can all work together and, and, and stop this, uh, that we're not pro-life, uh, we're not pro-life, and yeah. the only ones pro-life. We are all pro-life. We are all for quality of life. Mm -hmm. So I hope that that would end and that we can all, as I said early in the beginning, we can all work together for the benefit of uh, the women who, who suffer from all these uh, unwanted pregnancies and the young especially who are not getting the right information. Mm -hmm. They only get it from the computers and the internet and the, in, in the internet. So I mm -hmm. think we should all work together to, to have proper sexuality education, especially for the young. Okay, Lisa? Um, we warmly, ecstatically welcome this ruling of the Supreme Court. Uh, we congratulate uh, all our Kababayan who fought so long and so hard for this. Uh, we thank again President Noy, the Congress of the Republic, and now the Supreme Court for supporting us. Uh, at the same time, we remind ourselves not to be complacent, that there may still be obstacles uh, towards the full and proper implementation of the program. But now is really a time for compassion and understanding for us to begin to, if slowly, to blur the lines that we had to draw. Uh, in the last many years. We, we, we look forward to this or to this ceasefire that Emily was talking about because we still believe everybody on one side and the other have the uh, same dream of a better, more humane society. So let's Wait, what, give RH a chance to succeed. What obstacles? Like what are well, you... It could be that uh, the oppositors uh, to the law, some of them, may still uh, try to create difficulties for the implementation. This is not unique to the RH law. Mm -hmm. It could be for any law. So mm -hmm. um, it's in the same vein as Sec SP was saying. We have to remain committed to seeing that this program yeah. is actually Difficulties like what? Like uh, I was asking them mm -hmm. earlier, like are you planning to uh, block distribution of contraceptives? Mm -hmm. Great, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Great. So what difficulties are you uh, considering uh, that they may... Uh, well, since it was such a long and hard and sometimes ugly battle, that's still in the realm of the possible. But mm -hmm. over and above that, even above the need for vigilance, yeah. we believe the need for compassion and understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, Secretary Cabral? I look at the RH law as a matter of rights of mm -hmm. women, families, even men, to determine for themselves what kind of family and when they will have it, and the obligation of government to help the poor achieve their desires as far as family is concerned. So I'm very thankful to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. for upholding the constitutionality of the RH law. And now we can move on and, as I was saying, work together in order to make sure that it is implemented properly. All right, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Emily Bersosa, Risa Ontiveros, and Secretary S.P. Cabral. Maraming salamat. And thank you for watching. I'm Pio Ontiveros. This is News.ph. See you again next Wednesday. Good night.